up? It is your boy Brzezaden Flex here and welcome back to Soul Calibur 6. So, in the last episode, we played through Sophitia's story. We saw how she went through, how she was able to cure malfested creatures back into their normal phases, which completely blew my mind. We ended off with her um, helping Siegfried and him going on his way. Um, in this episode, we are now moving on to my most hated character, and that is Valdo. You'll see why I hate him so much. Mainly just because his style absolutely sucks. Like, it is the worst style you can possibly use. His story's not incredibly interesting. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything about it. We're just going to hop right into it. So, Chapter 1, The Secret Money Pit. Uh, he absolutely looks creepy. Look Ask at him. Ask any adventurer, and they'll know of Verci, a wealthy merchant from South Italy, and oh. his underground treasury, The Money Pit. <laughs> After getting rich in the weapons trade and earning the title of Merchant of Death, oh. Verci set sail with his fleet to find the legendary Soul Edge. But during his quest, Verci learned his entire fortune had been lost in the chaos of a war that broke out in Italy. Half crazed, <laughs> Verci hid what little he had left in the impenetrable money pit located on a small island in the Mediterranean. There he stationed a grotesque guardian who silently and mercilessly disposed of all who entered, quickly becoming the fear of all looters. In recent years, however, a new rumor began to spread among some adventurers. Historic rainfall had caused flooding in the money pit, destroying most of its traps. The Guardian had also vanished, leaving the treasure free for the taking. Yeah, if I remember right, Valdo was like a tortured slave whose mind was broken, and then he became like a guardian for, uh, for Verci. <laughs> I can't believe we got through the money pit that easily. Thanks for the help, Ivy. Looks Ivy. like that tip about the money pit being abandoned was true. What's she doing Yeah, here? all we had to do is rely on that trusty sword of yours. Traps don't scare us as long as we have you. But hey, aren't you gonna take any of the treasure for yourself? I only care for items related to Soul Edge. Oh. And I already have what I wanted. Now I just need to find Verchi's notes. Always so serious. You're beautiful and you're strong, so, you know, we could. Huh? What the hell is that? Um. Oh, what the? The sword's resonating? <laughs> hey, what did you go quiet for? Well, don't drop the treasure there. Huh? Oh, this, this is a head! Um. Above you! Ready your weapon! What? Okay, he's dead. There's Voldo. I knew this was too good to be true. That's your target, Blade. The Guardian! Ha! Oh, look at that! Everything that comes near us, Blade! Oh no! Oh, I'm at a disadvantage fighting here. My blade, show me the way out. What is going on? Yeah, Valdo is more beast than man. Like absolutely crazy. So yeah, Ivy came here with a bunch of people to loot a bunch of notes and stuff and didn't go so well. The master's will is absolute. On his return to the money pit, Baldo was greeted by invaders whose lives he set about taking one by one. Seeing the opportunity to cause a cave-in, the warrior Ivy cut through the ceiling, blocking off Valdo from pursuing her. Apart from Ivy, only a few of them escaped with their lives. One of them managed to get their hands on something highly valuable. However... Oh, that's creepy. He in sounds like Darth Vader. Room of the dark underground vault, there was a magnificent sarcophagus and chair illuminated by torchlight. Before it stood a lanky, grotesque man, the guardian feared by looters, with his head bowed in respect. What? His name was Voldo, a dark vestige of the talented man who had once served as Verci's right hand. Yeah, there he is. Long go. years underground had robbed Voldo of his sight and sanity. Before his dead master's sarcophagus, he reported his failures. 
Baldo deeply regretted the fact that he had left the money pit for three years in order to find Soul Edge. Oh, wow. And although he was completely alone, Voldo heard a familiar voice. That is so creepy. Oh, that's Verchi. Thank you for your report, Voldo. <laughs> With new challenges often come failure. Learn from your failures, and you shall be wiser. Okay, Verchi's Italian. He don't While sound you Italian. In the outside world, the money pit was flooded, and the traps were all destroyed. Now then, enough lamenting. You have important work to do. But there's one thing we must do first. I'm sure you have felt it right. The aura emanating from the swordswoman Ivy. My merchant's intuition speaks to me. That aura comes from the legendary sword I spent years seeking. Soul Edge. She also stole a portion of my notes, which are some of my most valuable possessions. And of course, we can't let the other thieving rats get away with the treasure they stole. Therefore, Voldo, I shall give you two missions. Your first is to track down that woman and acquire all the clues you can concerning Soul Edge. Your second is to reclaim my notes, as well as all the pieces of my collection that were stolen. Some of the vermin still remain on this island. Exterminate them first, and reclaim what they stole. I'm counting on you, my loyal servant. Okay, now is that actually Verchi talking to him, or is this all in Valdo's head? <laughs> Look at the jewel on this sword! That's really something. Not that I expected any less from Verchi's collection. Oh, that's terrifying. What was that sound? The wind? <laughs> ah! All right then. Right into it, please. Please just tell me that I can just wade through this story without having to use him. Right? No, this is a battle, 100%. Okay, just don't make it that I have to beat them all like three times or something. Okay, only one, and he's using Astaroth style. So yeah, now you guys will see why I despise Baldo's style. Yeah. He's got, like, decent attacks. Like, oh, jeez, okay. Yeah, oh, God. He just moves so weirdly. There we go. Okay. Chop it a chop. I like his outfit. His outfit is the weirdest thing I think I've ever seen. Okay. Use this spin attack again. No. Just come here, you bitch. There we go. Upsy daisy. Okay, that was surprisingly easy. I mean, he didn't fight back, so. Oh, Jesus. Sorry if I'm not, like, shouting or anything, but I just got done recording a Jack and Daxter video, so. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is the other adventure now. Okay. Well, you're pretty much fried as well, but Like, look at this. Why does he move like this? And yeah, see, he doesn't... You have to, like, do weird things to get him to try and face the person again. There we go. Okay. Let's see his special. Oh. What the... Oh, my God. Okay, that's weird. Like, he's... he's like a freaking spider. Ow. Oh. Holy shit. Okay. Look at him, he's a freak! Okay, I the thought I'd have more trouble. Had looted a number of the strange weapons Verci had collected. With Verci's treasure before him, Voldo reminisced as he held in his hands an unusual pair of blades from India. Huh? Amid the moonlight reflecting off the blood-stained blades, old memories began to resurface in his mind. What? You've never seen a pair of Jamadars? They're also known as Bundi Daggers. Other merchants call them guitars, but they're mistaken. If you what? wish to become the next Merchant of Death someday, you'll need to learn all about weapons and their uses. 
here. I'll lend them to you, but make sure you return them to me. <laughs> My instincts tell me they will be a good match for you. Go on, give them a swing. Oh, he's talking to Voldo. Probably before he went nuts. Also, how does staying underground cost you your vision? Surely that enhances your vision. Because you can, like, st your eyes adjust to the dark eventually. Okay, Lost Glory. Disposing of the invaders' corpses, Valdo set about restoring the money pit and its traps. Once finished, he secured the entrance and headed out on a journey to complete the mission assigned to him by Verci. Okay. This is like a year later as well. Ivy's scent was fading, but that did little to hinder Voldo. Honing his senses for years underground had given him something of a sixth sense, which allowed him to sense invisible auras that people leave behind. Oh, that's cool. As Voldo moved north, tracking Ivy's unique aura, he continued reclaiming the treasures stolen from his master. Hand it over, Grandpa! W wait! Take anything you want but this! <laughs> Why? Because that one will fetch the highest price? Bad, that's of course. What was that? I just heard footsteps. Ah, my leg! Well then. Wh what's happening? Like seriously, what would you say if you guys seen something that freaky looking? Like he, he's more scary looking than like Freddy or Jason. Okay. Sorry if I'm not saying much, but like I said, I gotta rest my voice. Okay. Two bandits, okay? That should be easy enough. There we go. You know what? As much as I roast Valdo, his he's actually kinda decent in this one. In past Soul Calibur games, he's absolutely terrible. In this, he's not too bad. Don't get me wrong, he's nothing compared to like Killick or or um Zhang Wa's style or anything like that. But you know, he's decent. Okay, oh god. Don't show his backside again. Man's wearing a thong. I don't need to be seeing that shit. Okay. Like, why does he move like that? Like, do you want to be mistaken for a monster? I get you're insane, but still. Okay, try this. No, okay, that's not gonna work. Try th no, okay, I'm not gonna land that attack. I don't know why I keep trying to use it. Okay. Okay, just do a little bit of that, and now... I used the wrong thing. <laughs> I meant to use his finisher. There we go. Oh my god, stop showing his backside. That's gross. Now he's gonna kill the merchant. Uh, you want this sword? I don't care what kind of monster you are. You'll not have what my brother left to me. Brother, the scent of Verci's treasures wafted up from the golden blade that the old merchant cradled. It was the item that launched Verci's quest for the golden treasures of the Orient, prior to his search for Soul Edge. Oh. You want to stop looking for Soul Edge? Verci, we just began your search for the golden treasures of the Enrico. Orient. Enrico. And now you want to go off looking for a sword that's nothing more than a rumor? You must be mad. You're either a wolf or a sheep, Enrico. It's hunt or be hunted. And only the bold come out on top. Bad enough about this. I'll lead the search for Soul Edge. And you, Voldo, will assist me each step of the way. What? But he's so young. He isn't even family. Wait, Bertie. Oh. So it is his brother. Weapons, your face, it can't be. You're. Oh, forgive me. If only I would have protected our fortune during the war, Vergie would still be here. You can have the blade. <laughs> he didn't take the sword? <laughs> Okay. Perhaps Voldo decided that he only needed to recover what had been truly stolen. Whatever the case, 
Voldo soon disappeared, leaving the golden blade with the old merchant. All right, then, so he's not completely insane, I guess. Still, that's crazy. A coastal town in ruins. Heading north, Valdo sensed something peculiar. Ivy's aura seemed to have split in two and was heading both to the north and the west. Though confused at this turn of events, at the back of Valdo's mind, and his, his memories of Soul Edge called for him to head west. Trusting his instincts, he continued on towards Spain. Oh! Tracking Ivy's aura, Voldo eventually came to a desolate Spanish port town. That's when he realized something. He had once visited this port at a time when it still thrived. Oh. However, the aura's trail only led him to the ruins of an establishment known as the Blacktail Inn. The next thing Voldo knew, he was surrounded by spirits of the dead. What? Steal, kill, and steal again. Okay, so the town's haunted. So the town is haunted by dead sailors, I guess. Am I gonna have to fight a bunch of skeletons or something? Because there's not, like, a ghost setting in this game, I know that. Yeah, bunch of revenants. Yeah. Oh my god, what did I do? Oh, I broke his armor. Now he's literally just a walking set of bones. He's using Zhang Wa's style. Ow, ow, what the? Oh my god, okay. Oh no, he's not using Zhang Wa's style. He's using, um... Wait, whose style is that? No, it is Zhang Wa's style. Down you go. Yeah. There we go. Nice and simple. I have to take out two more of them. Okay, let me guess. Uh, Raphael or Killick is the next style. Nope, it is Talim style. I don't know why. Yeah. Why are these guys dressed like uh, Centaurians as well? Okay. There we go. I don't know why I go for that attack. It's never gonna land. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Stay away from the edge. Come on, Baldo. Take him out. There we go. Oh. Why do I keep going for it? Oh, that'll work. Kneecaps! <laughs> Alright. Surely it's gonna be like Raphael. But, okay, this is the pirate captain, I guess. Yeah, there we go. What style is that? Oh, it's Sophitius, okay. I, uh, I haven't played this game in a long time, like quite a while, like a couple months. So, uh, or um, like a couple weeks, sorry, not a couple months. So, I'm not able to, like, recognize the styles instantly. There we go. Boink! Good night. He's like a little frickin' spider. He's the creepiest guy. Oh my god. Like, that is not healthy. You should not be able to bend like that. Oh, Cervantes. Cervantes? The scent of the ocean breeze, the whispers of the name Cervantes by the dead. Together, they caused a distant memory to surge up from the deep recesses of Voldo's mind. Enlist the help of the notorious pirate Cervantes de Leon in your quest for Soul Edge. Oh. A mission to negotiate with a pirate infamous for his cruelty meant almost certain death. Still, Voldo journeyed to Cervantes's haunt, the Blacktail Inn, in order to carry out his duty. So, Verchi's offering me twelve Saker cannons, along with this pistol sword you brought. Oh. It's certainly a rare item. I see Verchi taught you something about the art of appraisal. It's curious, though. If he wanted to ask a favor of me, then why did he not come here in person? Instead, he sent a whelp like you! Oh! My, my! A bullet grazes your cheek, and you don't even blink! 
Not bad. I've taken a liking to this weapon. Four top-of-the-line culverin cannons and four falconets. I want Virtue to send me the same things he gave to the Spanish Armada. Why does I'll he need that kind of weaponry? And let you <laughs> return with good news. It will be good for a little amusement at least. Why does he need the frickin' weapons that the Spanish Armada have? I mean, makes sense. Across icy plains. This is 1586 now. Uh, why did Ivy's aura seem to be emanating from Cervantes' old headquarters? Baldo didn't have the answer, but knowing who it, but knowing who it was, he could pursue at least represented a significant step forward. Oh my God, I can't read. Gathering his master's treasures that were scattered across around Spain along the way, Baldo followed the trail of Ivy's aura to the east. He's been chasing Ivy this whole time. As Baldo tracked Ivy east, her aura growing ever stronger, he became aware of two things. The first was that Ivy had crossed the mountains and was now moving west. The other was that he was not alone in this hunt. Some unknown group was also secretly tracking Ivy. Regardless of who they were, Voldo had no doubt they would only hinder his mission. So it was that Voldo decided to utilize the mountainous terrain to hunt down the hunters. Is it the Aval organization? The doomed woman with the blood yeah, of the is. cursed sword in her veins. I don't like the idea of being ordered to eliminate a mere woman. And why do we need so many people? Once you see her blade in action, you'll change your mind. Don't worry. I'm ready for whatever happens. But something's off. We should have been engaging the enemy by now. Where's the signal? What the? Uh-oh. Who the hell's this? Yeah, how did I guess it was the Aval? I guess because Ivy Sword is made from Soul Edge, so... You know. Okay, let's see how many of these guys I have to take out. Oh god, and they're using gross style as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh! Well then, he broke my guard like nothing. Oh god. Ow! What? Okay, never mind. Chop it a chop? Nope. Okay, that didn't work. Oh, he sidestepped me and just gave me a knee right to the gut. There we go. Just chop it a chop! Couple kicks for you. Oh, there you go, a knee of my own. Boink! Okay, the last guy will probably be using gross style as well. <coughs> oh, excuse me, my voice is starting to go now. Guess that's what happens when you scream like an idiot. Oh, he's using Cervantes as a style, okay. This might be a little tricky. Ugh. Okay, go for that low sweep, there we go. Okay, go high now. There we go. Okay, I missed. Never mind. Holy crap. Okay. Okay, give him a couple more chops. Why? Why do I always go for that? It's never gonna hit. Okay, I blocked just in time. Awesome. Okay, I powered up. Instead, I was trying to go for my attack. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Now I got the hiccups. There we go. Okay, nice and easy. I'm surprised I did that so easily against like Cervantes and Grow. Oh, he's actually it's killing them. An unidentified entity. I need to report. Yeah, you're not reporting anything, bud. Having fun. Ivy. Oh, right. I forgot you have no sense of humor. Never thought the day would come when I'd be saved by you. Don't expect me to thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing I have to fight Ivy three times now. That's how this stuff usually goes anyways. We meet again. After disposing of all those in his way, Valdo was finally in a position to attack Ivy. 
He had hoped to do so without drawing attention to himself, but somehow Ivy had known about her pursuer's presence all along. Hmm. Long time no see, Guardian. Or should I say, Valdo. I could sense you approaching. What? I've gained a lot of experience since we last met, you know. <gasps> I also did a little research. Research on the Merchant of Death and the young man who worked as his shrewd right-hand man. Yeah. As someone whose life was also ruined by that cursed sword. It's hard not to feel sorry for you. <laughs> I know. You want this box, right? Then fight me and win it back. Well then, I guess she did do her research. Now this is like two years later, so obviously she's going to be a little stronger. Oh, okay. Okay, at least it's just Ivy style. It's not something incredibly impossible. I see you two are possessed by a spear. What? Yeah. Okay, let's try that again. Holy shit, I launched her sky high. Okay, that didn't work. There we go. Spin attack. Give her a flying knee. Oh, he can do a drop kick, too. Yeah. Whoa! Okay. Oh, why? Stop going for that attack. No, you don't. Oh, I don't. No, oh, she went for a kick, too. Got her. Holy crap. Okay. Chop her down. Yeah, see, Baldo doesn't really do that much damage. No. Ouch. God, she moves so fast. No, you don't. Ow. 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 Do you mind? Okay. This is just this is not this is not going well. Okay, we gotta charge up here. Wait, what? I didn't want to go for a special attack. I wanted to charge up. Ow. Good go. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this is this is not gonna go well. Yeah, this this is not going well. Come on. There we go. I gotta go sweaty here. Otherwise, I'm not gonna win this. Okay, now get her. Oh, she blocked again. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, God almighty. Oh, my God. I had to go sweat mode to do that. See what I mean, though? Like, you get any half-decent style against Baldo, and you can kick his ass. There we go. Okay. Chop. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, try again. There we go. Yeah, see, his attacks do barely anything. Okay, time that attack wrong. Oh my god, stop going for that attack. Okay, chop. Now go up top. Now go underneath. There we go. Okay, hit it with your special. There we go, I got her that time. Oink! And good night. He's so weird. But we won, at least that's over with. Please tell me that's the last one. A loyal blade, void of any hesitation. You know, I feel a little envious of you now. <clears throat> I don't need this anymore. Take it. But let me tell you one thing. The soul edge you seek has already been destroyed. If you want to see for yourself, head to Ostreinsberg. Farewell. Oh. After throwing Verchi's box back to Voldo, Ivy leapt off the cliff and used her snake sword to disappear into the mountains. Voldo could have followed her, but the risk of dropping the precious box was too great. Since he had already collected several other treasures, Voldo decided to return to the money pit. Really? That's it? He's not even going to go and check out Soul Edge, I guess. He doesn't care.
A warm glow. It was safe to say that Valdo had served his master well. Arriving back at the money pit, he returned the treasures to their original places before heading to Verci's tomb to debrief his, de his deceased master on a mission accomplished. Standing before Verci's sarcophagus once more, Voldo bowed his head and gave his report. Hmm. Before long, amid an eerie glow, Verci appeared before his loyal servant. Oh, so maybe it really is Verci. Whoa. Welcome back. You have my thanks for completing both your missions. I find it hard to believe that Soul Edge was destroyed, but we will learn the truth in time. First, we should rejoice that my treasures are now back where they belong. This is definitely in his head. Also, the woman may have stolen a portion of my notes, but in this box are our letters. <laughs> The letters we exchanged while you were assisting me in my search for Soul Edge. These easily contain more information than one could ever glean from my notes. I'm sure she would want to get her hands on them. However, the real reason I value this box so much... ...is because it contains... A record of my successor completing all his training. No way. The fact that Voldo still remained loyal to his master long after his demise proved how much they trusted each other. Deep within the dark pit, in a hollow darkness lit only by the glow of flickering flames and gold, Voldo basked in a new, blissful light, born from Berchi's everlasting trust. That's wild! The names of the warriors whose fates were bound to the two swords have been etched into the very fibers of history. That's actually, you know what, that was actually a pretty cool story. Um, it was just like, it, it's crazy that after so many years of Verci being dead, Valdo was still loyal to him, I mean, He's more beast than man, like I said, so... Like, he spent three years of his life to try and find all of Verci's tre treasures to return them to uh, the money pit. That's insane. Uh, but anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. So there's Baldo's story done, and in the next episode, we move on to the Japanese wield... Or the... Ugh, I can't believe I just said that. The katana-wielding Japanese swordsman known as Yoshimitsu. So, anyways, guys, you all know what to do in the meantime. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe. It helps me a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Soul Calibur 6. Thanks so much. And... Goodbye.